What's going on, guys? I am Ryan with Michigan Storm Chasers, back again here with another update video for you guys. The topic of discussion and focus right now is going to be on two separate days of potential severe weather episodes here, Monday, today, in particular tonight, really, and then also again on Tuesday. So let's go ahead and break this down as best as possible. I want to preface this video and say uh, when we get in these summertime patterns like uh, these complex uh, of storms that are expected to roll through, there's a lot of mesoscale features, which is basically small scale features that we really can't predict and can't see. Uh, there's a lot of those features going on uh, with this forecast here that kind of precludes higher confidence. I'll go ahead and break this down as best as possible, but just know the next 36 hours for forecasters for us here at MSC, but also for the NWS, SPC, meteorologists across the state. This is going to be a confusing one for us. Okay. Now, the most likely solution is what I'm going to try to communicate to you guys, but I'm also going to give you guys the wide array of potential outcomes here. Uh, but at the end of the day, we don't 100% know for sure how this is going to evolve over the next couple of days. All right, so let's go ahead and start first and foremost with our SPC outlook. So on your screen right now is the SPC day one severe weather outlook. So breaking this down here, Dark green means you're in a severe risk. Light green means a general thunderstorm risk. Then yellow is a level two risk, okay? Scale of five, one to five. So dark green is marginal, level one. Pretty good chunk of the state. Only areas not in that severe risk are far eastern, lower Michigan. So like Detroit, Ann Arbor, Flint, Port Austin, Port Huron. You guys are not in that severe risk. But anywhere west of there is. The slight risk, which is level two there in yellow, does bump up into the western upper peninsula and it also comes close to the west michigan lakeshore it's about halfway across lake michigan there we'll have to keep an eye on that if they extend that over currently do not think they will but it does bear watching as we're going to be talking about the uh, complex we're going to be watching across the lake here in just a second so before we get to the live or the potential free future radar for this let's go ahead and go over hazards number one hazard damaging winds notice you have this a black hatched area over in Wisconsin. That is for significant wind. Number one concern today is going to be damaging winds across the state. That's going to be your main concern. Now, we do expect a complex of storms, perhaps a squall line uh, of significant wind, perhaps, over across the lake into Wisconsin and Minnesota. That's going to push eastward towards us overnight tonight. How far that gets is going to be the main question mark here. Okay, but just know damaging winds is your primary concern. Large hail is a secondary concern, but only for the western UP. Uh, lower Michigan, no concern right now for hail. And there is currently no risk for a tornado in the state today. Okay. Now, I want to also mention this before we get too far into, these, uh, into this uh, forecast here, but the SPC day one outlook is valid until 8 a.m. the next morning. So this forecast here. It's for today. Yes, but it is valid until 8 a.m. In this case, it would be Tuesday morning. So that time period is when severe weather could occur. All right. Now we looked at the hazards, looked at the SPC outlook. Let's go ahead and dive into some models here. So HRRR model, looking at how it's going to evolve or how it should evolve today. Now, again, this is just a model's idea. There's a lot of features that can happen within the summertime systems like this that the model can't pick up on. So models can often be wrong. But I think it has a pretty good idea of how this is going to work out. So let's go into tonight. This is 6 p.m. tonight. We're going to start seeing development off to our west here. This is at 11 p.m. We're going to see that squall line in Wisconsin. Bam, there's your squall line. This is at 2 in the morning. Okay, so perhaps western UP there getting in on some action. But this squall line, according to this model, stays south. It's going to push and organize across Wisconsin. Now it's going to push and arrive. The front of the front of this is going to arrive in Michigan. This is at five in the morning here, mind you, up just north of uh, Grand Rapids there toward Ludington, Manistee. And then that's going to push across the lake. And it's going to arrive about five to six in the morning here as a potentially decent squall line, but it should be on the weakening trend here. Uh, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. But again, that's going to cross Lake Michigan. And it should weaken as it does so, but severe weather still possible possibility here as that arrives in West Michigan. That's going to push. This is 7 a.m. Here's 8 a.m. Here's 9 a.m. And here's 10, 11, and then 12. And it's out of the state by noon. Okay. Severe risk is in place for that squall line. But just know, today should be dry. It's going to be a pretty good day today across the state. The severe risk happens overnight tonight. Okay. Now, 
The main question and concern with that is how much of the way of instability or support is going to be there for that complex here. If there's support, we very well could have a pretty decent squall line with severe winds pushing into West Michigan uh, early morning on Tuesday. We'll have to keep an eye on that. We'll be up here tracking it. But there is also potential that it's going to cross Lake Michigan. It's going to be weakening. It should arrive at just maybe perhaps storms and some rain. Uh, there's potential here for both of those. Okay. Now, as far as exact placement, that's also kind of in question. I do think this model does show a pretty good idea of where it should arrive at. But we do have other models. For example, the FV3 model, which is much further north. We also have a couple, couple other models here like the NAM3. That does have it a little bit further south as well, for example, down by Kalamazoo. We also have the RRFS model, which is showing us pretty much, uh, go back a model run here, uh, pretty much a clean slate of broken you know, broken line here uh, across northern Michigan, back here across Wisconsin here. So multiple outcomes on these models here. We don't really have one set uh idea i do think the hrrr model we just looked at this one right here i do think the kind of middle ground here arriving in lower west lower michigan roughly six five six a.m is a good estimate but just know the model spread between north michigan and south michigan is there and that's why i think why the spc has went ahead and put the entire uh western half of lower michigan there in a severe risk because confidence is low in exact placement uh but it's quite good in timing and stuff like that as well as uh hazards but again uncertainty if, it's, if it can survive all right now that's for tonight slash tomorrow morning we do have a severe risk for tuesday we've been watching this severe risk a bit better on, or a little bit uh a bit closer for Tuesday uh, because the overall pattern, synoptic, uh, synoptic pattern overall is, is quite interesting for sure. But I will say with latest guidance, um, with that squall line arriving early morning on Tuesday, what it does is on these models, it sucks the instability out of the atmosphere for Tuesday. And it shifts any risks that we're seeing south and west of us toward like Iowa, Missouri, Illinois. Uh, so, for example, that squall, and this is at 9 a.m., it moves through. If we continue this model into Tuesday night, this is Tuesday at 6 p.m. There's still nothing going on. But look out to your west here. We do have development way out here in Iowa and parts of perhaps Kansas. Uh, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. The instability on this model does try to fill back in just slightly, but it's not what you want to see for robust, severe weather. So Tuesday night right now is trending down. But I will say again, I'm going to preface this at the beginning of the video, the summertime patterns are surprising sometimes. There's a lot of mesoscale, small scale features that we just can't see on models. So it very well could be Tuesday has a risk still. But right now we're kind of seeing that play out in a way that it could be shifting well off to our west and south. We'll keep an eye on it. Although it's kind of like a domino effect here. We may not know for Tuesday until we get to Tuesday. Uh, but for right now, the SPC does have Michigan in a marginal risk minus the western central part of the UP. A slight risk does exist further south and west toward Grand Rapids and Lansing, Kalamazoo, Battle Creek, Coldwater, Hillsdale. That's your highest risk corridor. All hazards are possible within that slight risk area. Number one concern, damaging winds there. I am concerned if we can dominate, if dominoes can fall all correctly here, uh, it would definitely warrant concern for a perhaps significant line, a squall line of storms uh, to impact us. But again, models aren't showing that right now. We've got to wait and see how that plays out. Damaging winds will be your primary concern, though, regardless of any, uh, if any storms do occur, uh, that, that should be your main risk. Number, or number two risk here, large hail across the state. Uh, the, the slight risk for hail is pushed off to the west across Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Michigan. And also the tornado risk here is a 2% currently for that slight risk area. So a brief spin up tornado could also occur, but I want to preface that again. We're going to have to wait and see how this plays out because right now models are spread out a lot from nothing happening to, uh, you know, pop-up storms later on in the evening and Tuesday. So main concern, let's focus on Monday slash Tuesday morning first with that squall line. Then we can shift focus to Tuesday evening. Uh, but just know confidence in this overall evolution is almost, it, it's it's low, okay? We do expect those storms to arrive six or five to 6 a.m. though. That's a pretty good confidence with that. Other than that happening, we're, you know, severe with that first line. We're, we're not sure yet. And then also severe with Tuesday night. We're not sure yet, okay? Bear with us. This is going to be a confusing forecast, but we're going to keep you guys updated as best as we possibly can. As soon as we know information, we'll put it out there. All right. With that being said, hope that you guys got something out of this video. I know it's confusing. A lot going on here. Typical summertime pattern. 
We're going to do our best here. All right. We'll be live later on this afternoon for a briefing on this, as well as coverage. Uh, Joel and I will be up at all hours of the night tracking these storms. So we got you guys covered no matter what. All right. You guys stay safe. Enjoy a dry day today. A little bit cooler temperatures as well as less humidity. So enjoy your day. We'll see you guys likely tonight, but also this afternoon on our severe weather briefing on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks, guys, for watching. Smash that like button for me.